Well, we meet again, folks. How you doing? Thank you for joining me. My name is Martin. It's my pleasure to be your host for another Printify webinar. And I'm excited, and you should be too, because today our topic is all about how to grow your sales with the right ad strategy. And I am joined by digital, digital ad expert and wizard, Tyler Stanley, and he's going to be telling you everything you know, need to know, soup to nuts, so that you can unlock this powerful tool to grow your sales. Tyler, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic, and I'm really happy to be here. Wonderful. Truly am. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, our audience, you are in for a treat because by the end of today's presentation, you're going to have all the knowledge you need, again, to unlock this powerful tool. Okay? But, uh, and Tyler is going to be, uh, Tyler and I will be answering your questions at the end of today's presentation in a live Q&A session. So go ahead as we go through, uh, as we uh, go through our discussion topics today, put those questions into the chat. Our uh, moderator, Christophs, will collect those and we will, uh, we will address those at the very end. Okay? So, um, and I'd love to see our, our audience checking in. We've got people checking in from Tonga. We've got Michigan. We've got New Zealand, South Africa. We've got a very international crowd. Uh, Florida, Indianapolis. Uh, let's see, Jocelyn from Ontario, Canada. Thank you all for joining us. This is going to be a wonderful, wonderful experience because we're going to be giving away some prizes. And we switched it up a little, a little bit for this, uh, uh, the uh, last part of, of the year for the holiday season. Um, so we're going to be giving away a uh, sweatshirt with this beautiful design that you see me wearing right here. And that's for a reason, because the Gildan 18,000 sweatshirt, the sales nearly triple during the holidays. This is one of those products that people really go nuts for during, during the holidays. We'll also be giving away an ornament, another product that really takes off during the holidays and with a special message from me just to you, and also a personalized Printify webinars mug, and to sweeten the deal, a $50 Printify sales credit. Now that will be given away to the three lucky winners that answer today's trivia question correctly. And you'll get a link to answer that question at the end. Um, so yes, good luck to uh, pay attention and good luck to those three winners. Tyler, you're also gonna be giving away a, a, little, bit of, uh, a little bit of something to, to sweeten the pot today. Can you tell our audience uh, what, what that is? I am indeed. Um, I'm going to be giving people the opportunity to save 20% off of Kissel's yearly pro and expert plans. Wonderful. So stay tuned for that coupon code. Thank you very much, Tyler. And thank you to the to the folks out there at Kittle for lending us Tyler's services for this webinar. It's going to be absolutely wonderful. And we'll get into a little bit of Tyler's story here in just a second. But a little bit more housekeeping uh, before we move on. Uh, I'm at two points during today's presentation. I'm going to be giving away a little bit of money too. If you're if you're uh, new to Printify webinars, you know we like to give away a little bit of money. But if you are a, a regular viewer, you need to have you you already know that you need to have your Printify account open and ready. Navigate to the uh, to uh, click on the left hand side to on, on the wallet section. Go to payments and then navigate down to where it says coupon because I'm going to be giving away a coupon code. Whichever one of you out there uh, enters the coupon code in correctly first will win Printify fifty dollars of Printify sales credit pop directly into your account. And you won't see any fireworks or bells and whistles saying, congratulations, you won. But uh, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you are first, you'll get, the, you'll get the credit. If not, you'll say this coupon doesn't exist. And that means that you, uh, that you unfortunately did not win. But don't worry, you'll have another chance to win because we'll do it twice in today's presentation. All right, I would like to invite everybody out there uh, watching either live or on repeat to join me. For, for my live Q&A sessions that I host on Mondays and Wednesdays, these are 100% free. We're going to pop that link into the chat. Um, so, um, uh, yes, uh, my only goal with these sessions is to sit down with you uh, and listen to your stories and do whatever I can to make you more knowledgeable and more profitable. We have a whole lot of fun. We do shop audits. We do keyword research. I answer all your questions about Printify and do whatever I can to enlighten the whole uh, print-on-demand experience th throughout, uh, th throughout the entire industry. So join me Mondays and Wednesdays, 100% free. Come, let's have a conversation, okay? All right, and uh, as I mentioned uh, before, or as, as uh, Tyler mentioned before, he's joining us from the team over at Kittle. If you would like to sign up for Kittle, um, we're going to pop that link into the chat as well. We'll do it again a little bit later, but uh, be sure to sign up and, and use Kittle. It's by far the best design tool out there, perfect for beginners or, 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 the, or the advanced. Uh, come one, come all. It's my favorite. And if, you, uh, if you're curious about how it all works, you can go onto, onto their YouTube channel. They have plenty of tutorials. And I also did a webinar where I sat down with a rep 
from uh, Kittle. Uh, his name is Drew, and he went through everything, uh, uh, everything from top to bottom. You can find that in the live section of our YouTube channel. And while you're there, please subscribe. All right. Let's go ahead and move on. This is what we're gonna cover today. We're gonna cover topics like the basics, of course. We gotta start somewhere. And we're gonna pepper in a little bit about the holiday season and what makes, what makes running ads different during the holidays. We're gonna talk about uh, social media advertising. Uh, we're gonna talk about the costs involved and some key elements that you're gonna wanna include to make a successful ad, okay? And um, we're gonna talk about, uh, once you're running those ads, how to make sure you're optimizing so that you're getting the most out of your advertising dollar. And like I mentioned before, we're gonna do a live Q&A session at the end. All right, well, Tyler, tell, um, tell my audience a little bit about yourself and uh, why they should be taking in your information today. No problem. So my name is Tyler. I'm based in London. And I've been in the e-commerce and paid advertising space since 2015. So it also, just for a summary, it all starts back in high school, actually. Um, I was interested in entrepreneurship. I saw an ad for a drop shipping course. Um, I used all my birthday savings over the last, I guess, like four or five years to purchase that course. And yeah, I learned about the tools of the trade. I learned about branding, how to make a Shopify store, and how to run ads mainly. And obviously, no course is perfect. So I took what I learned and I applied it. And I created a Shopify store, which sold everything from dog beds um, to like to soccer merch, like people interested in like big soccer teams like Barcelona. LA Galaxy, etc. Stuff for Harry Potter fans, I mean, you name it, and I sold it. So that was my hustle back in high school. <laughs> and for two years, I was doing that actually, and it went pretty well. I got an offer, someone wanted to buy it off of me. So on the last week of high school, I sold my first company, and it was that e commerce store. And I got it, and I, I'd say I got a bit addicted to the art of marketing and advertising. So I thought to myself, I have all this information on how to make money online with ads. What if I applied it to other businesses? And so um, at the start of college, I started my ad agency where I helped literally all kinds of companies with their paid advertising on YouTube, Google, Facebook, and Instagram, and eventually TikTok, obviously, and also some email marketing. Um, so I did that all throughout my undergraduate degree. Um, I took a year um, out of, I guess, school. Um, well, no, I finished, I did that all throughout my bachelor's degree. Then it was the big COVID year. So I spent that year just working the whole time. Um, and then after that, I went to business school for a year. And at business school, I sort of um, got the startup bug. Everyone was talking about starting companies and joining startups and venture capital. So after I finished my, so after business school, I did some venture capital stuff. And I was like, you know what? It's fun investing into businesses and helping businesses grow. But what would be even more fun is if I joined one single business and gave them my everything. Because bear in mind, as a paid advertiser for companies, you can only help them so much. Like They might just be um, employing you to help with just their Facebook ads or just YouTube ads or just Google ads or maybe two of them. But I wanted the chance to apply all my marketing knowledge to one single company and luckily I found Kittle and that's where I am now. And at Kittle, I'm doing it all, um, the Google ads, email marketing, YouTube ads, Facebook ads, um, strategy on TikTok, um, branding, pretty much everything I have my hands in to some extent. Wonderful, wonderful. So quite the background. Now, tell my audience uh, why ads are important to the growth of a, of a print-on-demand business. So if you want to grow um, a print-on-demand business, a POD business, a print-on-demand business, you either need to get traffic organically or you're going to need to pay for it. Now, organically, um, you can either get, obviously, through influencers, the big people in the space, partnerships, or perhaps you create loads of cool TikToks, reels on Instagram or YouTube shorts, and you go viral that way. So those are your options organically. Now, the thing about growing, growing organically is 
you're relying on a bit of luck. Now, obviously, um, there are strategies that you can follow to make sure that you do get attention and get views. But with that being said, you don't know which video or which influencer will be the one um, and that lights the fire and blows up your store organically, right? So, but if you are patient, then organic growth is just fun. However, if you're a bit impatient like me, or, and you want to accelerate the process and find out in the next three weeks, is my print on demand store one that can become the next big brand in the space, then ads are for you. So yes, um, if you want to quickly find out if your store um, can you know, start making you a good amount of income, then ads are the fastest way to find that out and also to scale those efforts. Wonderful. Yes. And just to add a little bit to that, in my experience working with the biggest merchants here at Printify and therefore the biggest in the industry, yes, the top merchants uh, all, uh, all uh, make use of the power of running digital ads. So, And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So, um, Tyler, um, yeah, our goal is to basically demystify the world of advertising for those of you that may be a little bit intimidated about it or may not, or may not know how to take your first steps. Don't worry, by the end of today's presentation, you're gonna have everything you need to know. So let's get right into it, Tyler. Let's talk about the need to know basics of running an ad to, to support a print-on-demand business. Okay, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to go to marketing fundamentals. Um, now, I'm sure we have all kinds of people inside here, um, some older, some younger, some who read newspapers and some who consume TikTok all day. Now, when it comes to marketing, whether it's a Super Bowl ad um, in 2023 or it's an ad for a car in the 20th century or it's a TikTok ad, the most important thing is one, knowing what your audience wants. Do they want something to make their life easier, something to increase their social status, something to make them look cool, something to make them feel like they're worth a million bucks? That's the first thing. And then the second thing is making a good ad. So if you're making for example a TikTok ad right which as of right now are probably the most the most effective ways to advertise i'm talking about those videos that are about 60 seconds long they're vertical shot on the phone not too professional the most important aspect to those type of ads are the first three seconds um if you're speaking in those ads or there's a voiceover in those ads it's the words leaving um the mouth of either the person speaking, or maybe it's the robot voice that TikTok gives you. It's also the visual, right? So say for example, I have a print on demand store and I make stuff for gym goers or for people into fitness, right? Perhaps my target audience is people that, that are trying to become the strongest version of themselves. That's my audience. So maybe the first three seconds of my video ad will be something, will be someone doing something awesome. Like for example, lifting a crazy amount of weight in the gym. And perhaps the voiceover is something like, um, this wasn't me two years ago, but this is me now, right? Like you want to know what your audience wants and you want to know who they are, and you want to speak to that person directly. Or perhaps um, your POD store is, is, is for people um, that, I don't know, perhaps it's people that are into punk rock, right? And perhaps your target audience specifically is people that are really into the punk rock scene in the early 2000s, right? Those people want to be marketed to a certain way. Now, I'm not sure what that is, if, but if that's your niche, you need to spend the time to really understand that audience and what they want. It's even more helpful if that is an audience that you're actually from. So say, for example, um, you know that today's punk rock audience are people who have nostalgia about you know the late 90s or 2000s era of punk rock, right? Um, and so perhaps your t-shirt says something like, 
punk rock isn't what it used to be, right? And perhaps your ad, maybe the first few seconds of that is something along the lines of punk rock isn't what it used to be, right? And it's a, um, a, a shot of your cool t-shirt with the cool graphic beneath it. So long story short, the most important part to an ad is knowing who your target audience is, knowing what they want, knowing their desires, and putting that in front of them. Does that answer your question, Martin? Uh, yeah, it sure it certainly does, and that's a great place to get, that's a great place to kick off the conversation. Now, uh, a lot of our audience out there um, have are running a, a print on demand store on like a marketplace, like Etsy or on Walmart or eBay or something like that. What do they need to know uh, about running ads versus if you're running ads for your standalone Shopify store, your Wix or your WooCommerce, something like that? So the first thing is that unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately, but these platforms with all the privacy concerns and things like that, which have happened over the last, let's say, five, six years or so, they've made it such that they make it a lot easier for you to advertise successfully and smoothly and have all the data passed back and forth, basically, on things like Shopify. Um, when you run ads like an Etsy store, for example, um, or to any other sort of store, such as Etsy, um, or even eBay, whatever it is. It's very difficult for the data from your ads to reach the data of like Etsy or eBay. And the issue with that is as simple as if I click um, on your ad about punk rock t-shirts and end up on Etsy, if I don't buy, then unfortunately, um, platforms like TikTok and Facebook won't know that. So they won't know whether I bought or not. So maybe I keep seeing your ads and go, this is annoying, I've already purchased from you. Or conversely, say I reached checkout and I almost purchased, unfortunately, the platforms like TikTok and Facebook um, aren't going to know that. And you might have ads that cater to people that are about to buy that might be more convincing. For example, maybe I'm about to buy um, and you show me an unboxing experience, right? All these sorts of like cool things you can do, you can't do unless you have something like a Shopify store. Okay, so somewhat effective, but it's really geared towards those, towards those standalone merchants. And I don't want my uh, Etsy merchants out there to be uh, uh, disappointed or feel like this is, this is something that they can't uh, take, take advantage of. But uh, at the same time, uh, we're as we get through the holidays and we get to the uh, other side of the year and we start uh, 2024, um, then it's time to start thinking about where you're going to take your store and where you're going to take your business in that new year. And taking your successful business model of what you do on Etsy or one of those marketplaces, transforming that into a Shopify store or WooCommerce or uh, BigCommerce, whatever it might be, and uh, uh, unlocking the uh, uh, unlocking these new tools you get to work with is something that you might want to consider. And I want you to come along on that journey with us, and we're going to tailor an experience for you with our webinars exactly how to uh, exactly how to get that done in the new year. So thank you very much for your for illuminating that part of the story for us, Tyler. Um, okay, you mentioned uh, Facebook and uh, 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 TikTok. Okay, where's the best place for someone to spend spend their ad dollars? The best place to start is certainly Facebook ads, so which, which encompasses Facebook and Instagram. The reason why is because uh, so many, pretty much everyone has a Facebook, at least most people do, right? And it's been, you know, part of your life for a number of years now. The same goes for Instagram. Now, because of that, um, these platforms have so much information about your target audience. Facebook and Instagram knows what kinds of pages they follow, what kind of reels they watch, um, it knows what they buy even. And so for that reason, the algorithm on Facebook is the most sophisticated for, um, for finding brand new people that might have purchase intent for what you have to sell. So say, for example, and the niche that I'm in is selling like cool merch to new mothers, right? That could be my niche, right? Like really cool t-shirts, which super empowering to new mothers or new fathers. So 
I if I want to target that audience, there's no better place to do that than Instagram and Facebook. Because Instagram will know you've been, I don't know, looking at pages um, to buy stuff for a newborn baby and you're following like influencers who promote content like that. So for that reason, best place to start is Instagram and Facebook. And you could literally scale a whole business just on those platforms. Okay. What about Google ads? I've worked with uh, print on demand merchants in the past that have had decent success with Google ads. What's, what's your opinion? So the thing about Google ads is they do two things. So one, they capture intent. So say my print on demand store is called um, punk rock 2004.com. Um, if you're lucky, that's really the main, that's pretty cool. But um, <laughs> so if I, so if someone Googles that um, website name, um, you'll most likely want to come up first in um, in the Google search, right? Now, for that reason, um, you could run Google ads to capture that traffic. But And then there's also the people that type in something like punk rock t-shirts or cool punk rock t-shirts or vintage punk rock t-shirts or um, punk rock t-shirts, Blink 182, something, whatever, right? Now, that would be quite competitive because you'll probably run into the fact that there are tons of other companies that are trying to capture that traffic as well for people searching for punk rock t-shirts. So for that reason, Google ads can definitely work. And if you have the best punk rock t-shirts t-shirt store on the internet, Google will know that because when people go to your store, they buy and Google will know, okay, this is pretty, probably a pretty compelling store. So if they're bidding for, you know, to be first on Google or to, at, at top of Google for Punk Rock t-shirts, they damn sure deserve it, so we'll put them there. So the thing about Google is, yes, it's a great place to um, generate sales with paid ads, but you either need to make sure that you have the creme de la creme of your niche in POD designs, um, which you could get to one day, or you could be at now. Or if if you blow up on TikTok, for example, and you are punk rock 2004, and you're the hot thing right now, you might put out some Google ads just to capture that intent. When people type in punk rock 2004, you come up first. I see. So to catch fire, it's not, it's a good idea to focus on the Instagrams, the Facebooks of the world, the TikTok. Then once you're on fire, then move on to the Google ads. I like that. Okay, uh, what about less? Go ahead. Sorry, that's on less. Sorry, you know for a fact you have the best punk rock um, t shirt store on the internet, and you know, look, if someone types punk rock t shirt, punk rock t shirts into Google and sees my store and they have the funds to buy, they're going to buy. In that case, Google will know that pretty quickly and you'll be top of the search. Okay. Good. So if confidence is high, boom, Google ads are the way to go. Um, what about the others out there? Now, should uh, should pr a print-on-demand merchant bother with YouTube, running YouTube ads? So what's cool about, cool about YouTube ads is that they have, is that YouTube, I guess, in the last few years or so, came out with YouTube Shorts. Right. Now, I'm sure by now we've all seen YouTube ads, which are in vertical format. If you haven't, maybe you have on ad blocker or something <laughs> or aren't paying attention but um tons of really big brands are running ads in vertical formats on youtube and the beauty of that is that that means is that if you make a tiktok for example right you can use that tiktok for your facebook and instagram ads because on those platforms the best kinds of ads are the vertical ones in the tiktok style format what it also means now is that you can run ads which are also in that same TikTok format, which obviously are the same thing more or less as YouTube ad shorts. So you actually can very much um, be successful um, with your POD store by running ads on YouTube by simply taking your TikToks and running them as YouTube short ads. And YouTube, once again, is an amazing place to capture purchase intent from complete strangers. Similar, um, I guess, to, to, to Facebook, there's so much data on everyone 
They know what you're buying. They know what you're trying to buy, what you have your eye on, what, when they're shopping for. So YouTube is also an amazing place to run ads. I just think that Facebook ads are a lot easier um, because you because YouTube gives you more targeting options. Um, and I also think that Facebook and Instagram do have an edge in terms of finding your ideal buyers faster than YouTube can. Okay, wonderful. Great. So uh, let's stay on the topic of Facebook and, 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 and Instagram. Um, what sort of advice would you give to somebody who is interested in doing this, doesn't know how to take the first step? How would they go about uh, setting up uh, this process? Okay. There are a few things that will make it very easy for anyone and give them the confidence that, 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 that they need to start. The first thing that I would say is take an hour, um, make a tea or a coffee or buy a nice drink or whatever, and just sit down and think about your target audience and all the things that they want. Perhaps your niche isn't um, anything but people that want cool t-shirt designs, right? That could be your target audience. You might think about, okay, what kind of people want cool t-shirt designs? Um, and what's my target market? Is it people who are a bit younger, people a bit older, middle-aged, whatever? Um, what demographic or age, et cetera? And think about whether these people, um, and think about the things that they want. Is it that they want to be perceived as trendy or cool or edgy? Like, you need to figure that out first. That's the first thing. The second thing, which I guess is the fun part, is you should make a list of let's say um, of let's say um, make a list of let's say ten brands or maybe five brands that you like personally, whether it's Ralph Lauren or Brooks Brothers or it's Nike, whatever it is, Lululemon, right? Um, and also make a list of all the brands you can find in the market that you are targeting. So say your market is that punk rock niche. Go on Google, type in punk rock t-shirts, pull up all of the websites of brands selling punk rock t-shirts and make a list of those. So now you have a list of brands that you personally like outside of punk rock and punk rock. Now, the beauty is that you can very much these days look at the ads that everyone's running. So there's the Facebook ad library once again, a Facebook ad library, and you can type in Brooks Brothers, Ralph Lauren, or whatever punk rock t-shirt brand that you like and look at all their ads. And there are tons of other ad spy tools. What you need to do is spend a few hours going through all their ads, pick out the things that you like and you don't like, put it into like a Google um, doc or something um, and think, okay, what are things that I can replicate now with, with my budget, right? Um, and what can I do better than what they're currently doing? And that will give you dozens of ideas for ads. Um, and then based on your budget, you can create those ads. Um, and if I were you, I'd stick to like the more TikTok style ads shot on people's phones, um, or maybe just a vertical camera. Um, and yeah, I think about your unique angle, what you have to offer and how you can take what they've done and um, blend it to what you want to do. And that will give you enough ad ideas for the next six months. Okay, well, that's a great way to get started. Now, uh, since the holidays are right around the corner, I've got one more question for you before we close out this section. What does my audience need to know about, uh, about running ads during the holidays that makes running ads during the holidays different from the rest of the year? I'd say the main thing is that you have the sleeping giants decide to wake up. You have the Macy's of the world and the Nordstrom's, et cetera, that might not run many ads all year, all of a sudden putting millions um, into ads. Because I studied, the, I studied this during business school, actually, about something like um, it's called Black Friday because, they're, because businesses are all in the red all year. And then Black Friday comes... And it's time for them, I guess, to uh, make up that deficit. So you get all these companies that wake up and go, you know what, it's time to get out the red and they pour millions into ads. Now, that's okay because if you make really cool ads, people are still going to see them. It's worth saying, before we close section out, that 
Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google, TikTok, these platforms make money by keeping you on their platform. And that means keeping you entertained and keeping you happy, right? These platforms know that people aren't particularly happy seeing a bunch of, you know, super branded ads from Macy's and Nordstrom, which don't even speak to them and their wants and needs. So they might show you their ads more often during holiday season, but there's still tons of room for, for small guys like us um, that make really cool ads and have really cool brands. So if you put the effort into making really cool designs and making a really cool store and making really cool ads, whether it's holiday season or it's the middle of May, um, you can have great success with a print on demand store running ads online. Okay, wonderful. And you mentioned something about budget there uh, just recently. I just want to let everybody watching, we're going to get to that here. But first, I want to give away a little bit of money. So what I'm going to ask everyone to do is pull out your Printify accounts and get ready to enter today's first coupon code. Now, uh, navigate, uh, you, clicking on the left-hand side on the wallet button to where it says payments and then scroll down to where it says coupon and prepare to enter today's first coupon code. But before you do, we're watching on YouTube and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I would greatly appreciate it. I would consider it a personal favor. All right, so um, what I'm gonna ask you to do is be the first one to uh, enter in today's coupon code. If you're ready, let's go and get that started. So. Today's first coupon code is Convert Sales. All one word written just like this. I can hear the keyboards clicking out there in New Zealand and Tonga and, and places in between. Uh, so yes, uh, and again, you're not gonna see any big fireworks saying, congratulations, you won. You're either gonna get the credit or it's gonna say this coupon doesn't exist. Um, but uh, don't worry, if you, didn't get, if you didn't win, you'll have another chance later. If you did win, let us know in the chat and we, so we can all celebrate your win. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and move on with uh, with with the rest of our conversation here with Tyler Stanley. Tyler, um, let's talk about the nuts and bolts of running ads. When, if I'm a merchant, when do I know it's time to start running ads? Ooh, that's a good question. So there are two times. The first time is when you've been running your store and you're getting tons of organic traffic. Maybe you're on Etsy. And the Etsy SEO has made it such that, you know, people are discovering your store all the time, you're making sales, and you have a profitable business, right? Um, or maybe you blew up on TikTok, or, 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 maybe you blew up, or, or maybe you blew up on TikTok organically, or through influencers organically. So you have the money in the bank to want to invest into ads and take things to the next level. Or perhaps you're someone that knows you have a really cool brand, you have really cool print-on-demand designs, and you haven't got any organic traffic or anything like that, and nor do you desire to build out that arm of your business. Uh, but you know, look, I've got, let's say, um, there's some money I have lying about, I'm confident in these designs, I'm confident that I know what my target market wants, I've studied my competitors, I've studied big brands that I like, I know what kind of ads I have to make. And, and I also know that with Facebook ads, it's as easy as targeting a broad audience, targeting by age under location. So say for example, people um, aged 25 to 44, um, based in the USA, um, men and women. So I, this stuff is all dialed in, I have the budget. Um, I've made these like seven different ads. Let's try it and see what happens. Okay, okay. Well then, here's the million dollar question, Tyler. Uh, what does it cost? What should I budget for my ads? Especially if I'm a beginner, where do I start in terms of, in, in terms of how much money I throw at this? That's a great question. I think it comes down to a bit of math. So I think if your POD designs, let's say, let's say your flagship T-shirt, by the way, it's worth saying, when you do run ads, you want to have like one, two or three flagship products. So say your flagship T-shirt um, costs $35, right? 
realistically for that, you and now realistically with ads, you can expect a good ad to bring in sales um, for a cost per acquisition of let's say a third of your t-shirt. So see a t-shirt costs 30 bucks, then you might know, okay, I can expect to get sales from like 10 to 15 bucks realistically, maybe more, but you'd be doing pretty well and doing you know, what is possible um, with a cost per acquisition of 10 to 15 bucks, right? So with that being said, if you want to see results pretty quickly, then you might say, okay, if my t-shirt costs, I don't know, 30 bucks, I can expect to pay 15 bucks per sale, then you might say, okay, what I'm going to spend is some sort of multiplier times my cost per acquisition. So I might spend, let's say, three times my cost, my expected cost per acquisition. So three times 10 is 30. Um, three times 15 um, is 45. Is it 45? It's 45. Yes, yeah. your math is correct. <laughs> or say you're going for like a luxury audience and it's print on demand, right? Which is very possible. And your t-shirt costs um, $100 or 90 bucks. You might expect to get sales for like $33 per that You're paying $33 to get an $100 sale. Now for that reason, now you're spending like 100 bucks a day on ads um, to get a few sales. So it all depends on what you're charging for your flagship product, but I would say split, um, I'd say cut that, um, what I would say is find a third of your flagship product's cost and maybe spend three times to five times that on ads every single day. That is a safe way um, to um, budget for Facebook or Instagram or TikTok ads. Okay. Yes. And but uh, and, uh, of course, within this, uh, within all all the math that you're doing, make sure that you're not over budgeting and that you're not uh, overextending yourself, so you're not over your skis, so to speak. Uh, and just start at least at at least somewhere where you feel comfortable. Okay. Well, Absolutely. wonderful. So, what kind of ads should I run right in the beginning? We're talking about Facebook. We're talking about Instagram, right? I'm, yeah. Okay. And then, no. and then, like style wise, what are we talking? So, once again, this comes down to your research first and foremost. Because if you're going um, for like a younger audience, maybe you might find that your research shows that your competitors are all running TikTok style ads and maybe some static imagery. Or perhaps you have an, or, or maybe you have a sophisticated audience which is slightly older and perhaps they react to carousels. Or static imagery, right? So, and so, your research will tell you what kind of ad you should be running. And these platforms, such as the Facebook ad, um, such, such as the ad library on Facebook, they'll also show you when something started running. So, if I can see that my competitor has been running this particular ad since 2019, I know it's working for them. And if it's an image, and I know, hmm. Like if that's isn't all running like these like these image ads for years, maybe I should start there. Or perhaps they're TikToks. So I'd say do your research. Um, but with that being said, more times than not, the most successful ads these days are those TikTok style ads. So what you can do is find your competitors, go on to their TikTok, go on to YouTube Shorts, go on to Instagram Reels, um, spend a few hours um, doing your research making lists of what they're doing and finding out, okay, what kind of hooks are they using? Visuals, what kind of music are they using? What kind of aesthetic are they using? And find out, okay, based on what I want to do, what inspiration can I take from their TikTok style videos and their reels and ads? Um, and what shall I be doing? And one more hack I have for people is that the beauty of like, looking at a competitor's Instagram or TikTok is that you can see the amount of views that each reel or TikTok gets. So if you can see, you know, like these 10 TikToks over the last year have got more views than anything else, that tells you that these are working organically. And if something works organically, it should work for ads. So there's, a chance, there's a chance that your competition isn't even using what's working organically for their own ads. So you can take what's working for them organically and use that for your own ads. And you can also 
take what's working um, in their ads based on those ad libraries and use that to yourself too. So there really is no shortage of uh, information, sorry, no shortage of places on the internet to find out what kind of ads you should be running for your store. Okay. Um, and then quickly, run, let's run down the uh, elements of a good ad for your, POD, for your POD business. Okay. So the first part is the hook. It's the visual hook and it's a text hook. So say your target market is new, um, um, is like, is say, um, um, let's say it's, um, um, sorry, and let's say um, it's, um, let's say it's brand new parents, <laughs> brain pop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brand new parents, your ad might say, um, if you're a brand new parent, you're gonna love these t-shirts, right? And then the visual hook maybe is like someone jumping and the t-shirt on their, and t-shirt they're wearing changing every two seconds. Um, and then perhaps the next part of your script is the problem. And problem could be, you know, if you're a newborn parent, so um, maybe it's like, um, if you're a new parent just like me, I know that you're so proud to be a new mother or new father. I want to show the entire world that you are indeed a new mother or new father. Now, if there's no way to say it other than carrying around a newborn child, um, these t-shirts help me show just that. They have different styles, um, different cuts. It's like there are, there are some which are more graphic, there are some which are more text-based, some which are funny, um, some which are, there are some which are more heartwarming. Um, and obviously the most important part then is actually showing off all your cool designs. And then there's the call to action, which is um, if you love these t-shirts just like I do, check out xyzstore.com today. So the most important part, once again, is the hook. Then it's the problem. You might want to agitate that problem by saying something like, you know, the problem is you want to show the world that you're a newborn parent. Agitation is, um, but there are enough ways to show it. And the solution is that's why I love these t-shirts by xyzstore.com. Then you get into showing off the cool t-shirts or hoodies or mugs, etc. And then the CTA is visit xyz.com. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. And I can, I can, I can surely attest that, uh, that that is true as a new parent myself. If you can make a, even the slightest bit of connection to to, to your audience that way. Like for instance, my wife, if uh, she sees anything even remotely interesting or, or anything that she likes, she will buy it. We get deliveries constantly. So that's actually, that's actually really good advice. All right. Um, so let's, uh, let's uh, close out our, 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 our discussion with uh, how do we know that an ad is, is working or not? How do we optimize ads once we, once we're actually running them? Yeah. Great question. Now, if you remember what I said, so if your T-shirt costs $30 and your expected cost per acquisition maybe is 10 to 15 bucks. Now, the first three days of running ads, what I would tell anyone is just let the ads be. Don't touch anything. In fact, put the ads up, um, close out the ads manager where you set up all the ads and, you know, just enjoy your weekend or enjoy your weekdays, right? And then come back to your ad account. Now, what I'd recommend is the first thing is that you run different types of ads, right? Um, perhaps you have um, ads which are about the fact that, you know, um, these t-shirt designs or like these cut designs are like really cool and aesthetic. And perhaps you have ads which are more showing, you know, the designs um, in action. So perhaps it's like um, ads for people who want to get bigger in the gym. You're showing, you know, you in the gym working out with these tees, etc. Right. So different angles of trying to sell this to your target audience, if that makes sense. Because bear in mind, you've made that sheet on all their wants and needs. So make ads around different wants and different needs and put them all up right? Now, what you'll see is that if an ad doesn't spend much money, despite you giving it budget, that means that 
Facebook and Instagram have decided that your ad isn't good enough. So perhaps you thought that your ad targeting people who want to get bigger in the gym or more slim in the gym around a certain messaging, certain angle, perhaps you thought it would work and it just doesn't work. So it spends no money. You might also have that same ad that you thought was going to work, spend lots of money and get no sales. Or, and you'll also find ads that you know are in the Goldilocks zone where they spent a good amount of money and they've also got you a few sales. What you want to do is take the things which have worked and double down on those. So create different, um, so, so to take what's worked and make some variations of what has worked. So double down on what's worked and try to figure out, okay, these things haven't worked, why haven't they worked? And put them to the side. And maybe try them again with a different angle or different messaging or just double down on what's working. But either way, now you have what's worked, double down on that and also test out some more, some new wants and needs. And before you know it, what you'll have is an ad account with um, tons of money being spent on like all of the things that actually do work. So maybe there are five wants and needs that your target market really um, responds to. So you have ads targeting those, um, some images, some carousels, some reels, TikToks, targeting the messages um, in different ways. But you're, at the same time, you're always testing brand new wants and needs and brand new angles. So that is how you go from zero to 100 as far as running an ad account. You put a bunch of things up, you take what's worked, double down on what's worked, and keep doing that, but at the same time, keep testing brand new wants and needs and desires until you have several, or maybe you have three or four that you know work, but at the same time, never stop testing. Like Thomas Edison, I guess, to just be a mad scientist. <laughs> keep going, keep testing. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, and after a while, you're going to get a sense for what works, what doesn't, but then you got you to gotta consider that the market shifts, the trends change, so you really have to keep on, on, on that testing. Now, uh, Tyler, now how can, uh, now a tool like Kittle is not just for designing t-shirt designs. You can also use this for, for uh, uh, designing your ads as well, right? Yeah, I mean, Kittle is an amazing tool. Um, you can very much, for example, take a static image of your t-shirt, or maybe it's you wearing your t-shirt, or a friend, or a model wearing a t-shirt, and you can add like some cool text to it and some cool branding to it with Kittle and a tool like Kittle, yeah. Okay, wonderful. All right, and then uh, finally, running holiday-specific ads, like how much of like the reindeer and the snowflake elements, you know, things like that, I mean, is, is that necessary during the holiday season? So when it comes to video ads in the holiday season, if you have a big budget, you can very or you have the time, you can very much make like a Christmas um, or Thanksgiving style ad, right? You can like, for example, um, like a Christmas ad around something like, you know, um, maybe it's like a mock scenario of one of your good friends who loves punk rock opening up a gift and it's your t-shirt for them. That'd be a very cool ad, right? Um, or you could be a bit more time efficient and take a video ad, which has been working for you in the past, and just stick a banner on it, like um, a holiday season sale, save 20% with this code, right? Because that will still work. If it's a big red banner over a video ad, people can't miss that. Um, and also bear in mind that with Facebook and Instagram ads, there's like a caption and there's a headline in the ad. So you can put like in capital letters in your headline, um, Thanksgiving sales or Cyber Monday sales or holiday sales, Christmas sales, etc. New Year's Eve sale. Like you can make it so that it can't be missed. Okay, wonderful. Yes, make it, make it known. The holiday shoppers always looking for a deal. They expect a deal, but they also have more money to spend on average. So wonderful, that, that's great news. And I'm just kind of, uh, I'm just trying, uh, I'm, I'm uh, curating the uh, chat. Uh, you're a champion, wants to know how to market to my wife. 
Well, uh, take it from Tyler. Uh, run some Instagram ads. She lives most of her life on Instagram. So if you if you uh, if, if you have something for babies on Instagram, chances are my wife's gonna buy it. Okay, wonderful. All right. Well, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the live Q and A part of today's of today's uh, session. Uh, but before we do. I want to give away our our second and last coupon code of the evening, or excuse me, of the day. So I'm going to ask you once again to pull out your Printify accounts, click on wallet, then find the payment section, and then navigate down to where it says coupon and prepare to enter today's second coupon code. The winner will receive $50 of Printify sales credit. So loosen up your fingers, stretch them out, and to get ready to enter today's second code, which is... Ho, ho, holidays, written just like this. The holiday season right around the corner. The best time there is to be a, a print-on-demand merchant where uh, there is so much demand, the competition is crazy. So do yourself a favor and really consider unlocking some of the strategies uh, and applying them to uh, some of the strategies that were discussed today and applying them to the growth of your print-on-demand store. Okay, all right. Well, Tyler, are you ready to answer a few questions? Absolutely. Wonderful. All right. So we've got a few questions here. Uh, our first question comes from Dennis. Dennis T. Thank you for joining us, Dennis. Dennis's question is, what's the best social media platform to run ads cost efficiently? Is that still Facebook and, 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 and Instagram? Yes, because people spend all day on those platforms. The platforms have so much data. The ads are so easy to make. You just make a TikTok and you put them up. Okay, and uh, can I start at low as low as like a dollar a day running ads? And what kind of results? Uh, can I, I would expect? go at five dollars a day. At least that's what I learned back in the day in my dropshipping course. Okay, I think I think it makes sense. At least five bucks a day. Yeah. Okay, and especially during the holidays, it makes sense to spend a little bit extra because again, you've got a lot of competition. Like you said, the Macy's and the Nikes are really really pumping some money in, into the, it's it, as far as being as far as as far as running an advertising service yeah it's really the salad days for them okay all right moving on uh, uh shannon dora has a question thank you very much for submitting your question and joining us today shannon what are the easiest ways or recommended strategies to identify the needs of an audience that is a great question now I would say there are a few ways. Now, the first way that you might um, do this is maybe go onto YouTube and type in your audience niche. So maybe, for example, I'm um, this newborn. So I mean, for example, um, it's brand new mothers or brand new fathers, right? There will be influencers that have made like 20 minute videos about being a new father or new mother and just and just make a note of what they're saying. They're saying things like, I couldn't be happier. I'm so proud. I want to just show the world how beautiful my baby is. That's one way. Um, and the second way I say is go onto like the trust pilot or the review site or the reviews of a competitor um, and look at what people are saying. You know, people might be saying things like, people always stop me and ask me where I got this from. Um, or people mention that they love like the color patterns on this design or people always tell me that like this design, like, like it made them stop and laugh when they saw what my t-shirt said or my hoodie said. Um, so figure out like what kinds of things that people care about, um, when they're leaving reviews for your target audience. There's also Reddit and other forum sites you can use. Okay. Wonderful. That's a great tip. Yes. Check out what, uh, take take the pulse of, of the cultural zeitgeist, and there you go, that's a, that's a good compass to use. Um, let's move on to George's question. George Riles, hope I'm hmm, reading that correctly. George Riles, thank you for joining. Um, now, okay, this is a question I get a lot in my live Q&A sessions. Now, I'm gonna pose it to you. Okay, what's an easy way to advertise without spending a whole lot of money? And that's his question. I want to take it one step further. Got any tips for someone that wants to get the get, get their store out there, but they don't want to spend any money? What do you say? Yes, of course. I mean, there are tons of really cool brands that come out over the last like three, four, five years that I know of, which have blew up without any advertising. It's very possible, you know. Um, and I would say if you want to not put money into advertising and want to blow up, you definitely can organically, you know. Um, so rather than putting money into it, 
just put time into it, you know? What you can do is message a bunch of influencers or content creators or just people who are big in that industry um, and you can tell them, hey, I have these really cool designs, um, T-shirts um, in your niche, whatever, um, and I'm keen to send them to you. And what I would do is not even ask them for promo. Just be like, can I send them to you? And if so, where can I send them to? And they might go, yeah, sure. Send them to this PO box or this address, right? And if you have a really cool design, that person will wear your design. And because most influencers, well, every influencer enjoys like putting their audience onto really cool things, they will most definitely put on your design and tag you in it. And you can blow up that way. There are countless brands that I know of that have blown up just that way. Um, so that's the fastest way I say it, to, 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 to organically. Send it to a bunch of cool influencers in your audience. The second way, obviously, um, or the, the second way is then to just create a bunch of cool TikToks around your designs being um, so cool. Okay, wonderful. Yes, and I'm glad you hit on the hit on the influencer strategy. I'm a huge fan of influencer marketing, and there are levels of influencers out there with all different sizes of, of audiences. And definitely, there is there is a uh, a place to start where it's just going to basically cost you the you know the cost of you know sending over <laughs> so, so, some of your cool merch with some of your best designs because it's a win win. Because the influencer gets to get, gets to get some uh, free free designs, or excuse me, gets get some free merch. All they got to do is put it in front of their audience, boom, and then and, and then you're off and running. So I'm really glad you touched on that. Okay, let's move on. Uh, we've got time for just a few more questions. So I'm going to apologize in advance if we don't get if we don't get to your question. Um, but Andy Reich asks, Andy asks, uh, which ad type is typically more effective, a video ad or a carousel ad? 1000% a video ad. Um, more people are more accustomed to engaging with video ads. Because people watch videos just to catch up on anything, whether it's like stuff from sports or like a funny video or a new meme, pretty much anything. Like people are so accustomed to engaging with videos that if your ad is a video and it's very organic, they might end up watching your entire ad and becoming a new customer. Whereas carousels aren't really used for, aren't really used for organic means. They're pretty much only used for ads or mostly for ads. So for that reason, it's a bit more expensive. So I would definitely say start with videos. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. And before we get on to the, uh, our last few questions, uh, I just want to slip right in here that coupon code that you mentioned, and I'm, we're going to pop into the, into, into the chat already, a link to sign up for Kittle, but tell my audience uh, what that, what that uh, coupon code is and what they'll get when they, when they uh, put, put it in when they sign up for Kittle. The coupon code is Printify20, and with this coupon code, you can save 20% on a yearly plan for either Kittle's expert or pro plan. Um, yeah, so 20% off for the entire year. And with that, you get a bunch of upgraded features um, to take your design to the next level. Obviously, Kittle has a free plan, obviously Kittle also has a free plan, but with the pro and expert plans, you can really make um, some amazing designs. Exactly. So that's Printify 20 and it's money well spent. I promise you, you're going to love it. I have a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun just going on there and messing around trying to and uh, with with your templates and kind of making them my own and Frankensteining elements from one template to the other. I absolutely love it. And it's, and it's a good time. Um, so wonderful. Printify 20. Save yourself some money. Wonderful. Um, Lori Cox has a question. Um, and this is this is this is a good one. Should you run the same ad to various audiences? You very much can, yes. Um, so you might have one audience who's interested in this T-shirt because it makes them look edgy. And you might have an audience that likes this T-shirt because, um, it's, because it's comfortable, right? Um, that, to, those could be two different audiences. And you can run the same ad to those different audiences. But what I would say is that to ensure your ads are the most effective, you definitely do want to be running ads which speaks to that audience's wants and desires. Because you might choose, for example, a material for your design 
which is super comfortable and stretchy, right? Um, and you might want to target them with messaging, which is about the fact that it's comfortable and stretchy. And then you have the edgy audience who wants ads about why this T-shirt is so cool and the different colors and different you know, designs you have for it, et cetera. So I would say try to give each audience what exactly it wants, but you can also um, you know, test different um, messages for different audiences that okay. aren't that audience. Wonderful. Well, let's wrap it up with one last question here. Um, this comes from, uh, you're a champion. Oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, the critical observer. Okay. Uh, he wants to know what are the best ad pl platforms for older buyers? So if we're, if you're gray haired like me or, or, uh, or, or, or older, where should people be spending their ad dollars? It's the same ones as younger people. <laughs> I mean, my grandmother, for example, uses TikTok more than I do. And it's crazy. Like, she loves it. And she's like in her eighties, she loves TikTok. Um, you know, it's the same ones. I mean, I think these days, um, every generation is on the same platforms. They're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. So all of the platforms really work. I'd say test all of them. Um, and yeah, see what happens. Wonderful. Yes. And I use TikTok way more than I use Facebook. Okay. So it's, it's true. <laughs> it's true. All right, uh, Tyler, thank you so much for, for uh, sharing your time with us. Thank you for uh, answering uh, the audience's questions. My apologies if we, didn't, if we didn't get to your question, but the good news is you can join me for my live Q&A sessions on Mondays and Wednesdays, and we can discuss what, you, what, what was discussed in, in, today's, in today's webinar. We can talk about anything in the print-on-demand universe, all with the goal of making you more knowledgeable and more profitable. We're going to pop that link to sign up again Mondays and Wednesdays, 100% free. It's part of our commitment here at Printify to make sure you have everything you need to be as successful as possible, especially now that the holiday season is right around the corner. So, wonderful. Um, we are going to ask you to, uh, we're going to pop in a link for a survey here at the, uh, 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 for a survey uh, where you'll be asked a trivia question based on today's uh, presentation, the information that Tyler provided. Three lucky winners who answer the trivia question correctly will be receiving a, uh, Print of, we'll be receiving a Printify designed Gildan 18,000 sweatshirt, which is super popular, that explodes in popularity during the holiday season. Sales almost triple. It's absolutely nuts, probably even bigger this year. And a, uh, uh, a Christmas, or excuse me, a tree ornament with a, personal, with a message personalized from me to you and uh, uh, with, with, with a special, special message and a personalized Printify webinars mug along with $50 of Printify sales credit. So this is a, a prize package that we, that we did just for, this, just for this season. It's our biggest one yet. So uh, uh, hope, good luck, good luck. Hope you answer the question correctly and uh, I'll be in touch with the winners. Okay, and uh, join us next week. We are going to be live with another webinar. We're doing it on another platform. We're doing it on Hubilo. We'll all be sitting down with a uh, expert in selling on eBay, and we'll we'll pick his brain so that you can add eBay uh, to your to your uh, print on demand empire, diversify a little bit, and capture more sales. Okay, so join me for that. Check your inboxes. So we'll be sending you information on how you can join. Uh, but that'll be next week, and then the following week on the 26th of October, I'm going to be sitting down. With the founder of Hello Custom. Now that's a personalization tool that you can add to your to your Etsy account to facilitate uh, personalized orders. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool. He's gonna be. We're gonna be exploring how to use that. Unlock the power of that for the holiday season. So join me for that. We're lining up all all courts, all sorts of crazy, good, and useful content for you. But uh, a part of that survey that we're putting in into the link, is, we're gonna ask you what you want to see from us because. Uh, that's how we know where to divert, where, where, where to point our resources so we can put out excellent content that is specific to you and your growth, okay? So with that in mind, Tyler, thank you so much for joining us today. This was absolutely wonderful. I think the audience received just tremendous amount of valuable, actionable information. So thank you very much for your time. It was an absolute pleasure. Um, but that's it for today. So uh, I guess goodbye, everybody. And I'll see you next week on Hubilo. Thanks, Tyler. And goodbye, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Okay.